1984 won't be like 1984. Get your iPod. iPod's here. You like your Macintosh. You like your Macintosh. Your Macintosh. Up, up. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, it is the only one that needs that standard. iPod. A thousand songs in your pocket. If today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? <laughs> Hi, salut, hola, hallo. Uh, this will be everything in English, sorry for the other guys not understanding that. Uh, we're here at Macworld with uh, the huge, uh, well, huge in terms of how cool it is, iPhone behind me. And uh, we're going to be here at Macworld. We are here already since a few days and we will do a bunch of interviews. From the beginning on, I have to say thank you to our sponsors, Ecamm, which you can find at ecamm.com. They do a bunch of cool software like eyeglasses, call recorder, conference recorder. They also do hardware like um, the image um, web camera which is the only webcam uh, for the Mac right now uh, as far as I know uh, over USB and uh, they do also the Huckleberry uh, Elgato you know them they do the pretty cool BVBT thing um, so basically that's it there is this booth here which is a double booth and compared to Paris there is one side here one side of the on the uh, well one other side the, um, there is only two iPhones here so uh, don't envy us for uh, being here and being able to touch them because first of all we're not able to touch them they're under uh, a plastic or a glass whatever but we can see it and we can tell you it's pretty cool my name is AJ I'm from Market Circle I'm the president of the company uh, okay. we make a product called Daylight and Billings uh, okay. we just launched Billings uh, two days ago okay. uh, here at the expo okay. or at the uh, at Macworld okay. and uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to having a great application so basically, uh, explain us what uh, Billings is and Daylight. Uh, maybe we should start with Daylight, which is a bigger product, and uh, it seems looks like Billings has inherited of some things from from Daylight, right? That's correct. So, so Daylight is a group management product. Basically, we have shared calendars, we have shared contacts, we have meetings, uh, we have uh, shared tasks, shared projects, and shared opportunities. So as a small business, you can really accelerate um, your business with this product. Um, we, in some cases, can also repl uh, replace the functionality of Microsoft Exchange in small companies, 5, 10 users, not for bigger companies, but for smaller companies, which is most of the Mac companies are, are smaller companies. We can replace the functionality of Exchange. So uh, that's especially true with uh, our DMI product, which is our mail integration product. Um, and uh, so you can have any mail server, yeah. and uh, it plugs into Apple Mail, and it feels like it's part of Apple Mail, but it's it's not. It's our, our addition yeah. to it. And from there, that communicates with Daylight, and you can see uh, your contacts that you have in Daylight. You can see your projects, your opportunities right in Mail. So if you have a contact link to an open opportunity or an open project, it's right there, and you can link them, and the email will get copied into the database. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you can then share it from there. So if anybody wants to look at the project in the um, in the future, yeah. they'll be able to see the whole history, no matter who the email went to. Okay. So that's very unique, very special. Uh, and um, the the rest of the product is really geared towards uh, making a company more effective. For example, we have delegation. And uh, what delegation does is you can delegate. I can delegate something to you, yeah. and um, you'll get a notification. And if you delegate to somebody else. Uh, they'll get a notification. If they change the status, both you and I will get notified. So we know what's going on. Because what's happened a lot in a lot of small companies is we meet in the hall or somewhere and we, we talk and say, can you do this for me? And you say, sure. But by the time you go back to your desk and I go back to my desk, we've both forgotten. You know, in a very busy environment, it's, it's really, really tough that way. So if you do it in the application, you'll get that notification. But better yet, we have smart lists. And with smart lists, you can do a smart list that say, for example, what did I delegate uh, to you okay. over the last 7, 10, 20 days, one month that's not been done? Yeah, yeah. And then I can follow up with you. And you can also do the same. What's delegated to me uh, by you okay. in the last 7 days that I have not done? Okay. So in case we get ready for a meeting, I can have all my, uh, all my stuff ready. Uh, so really powerful features like that uh, really uh, separate daylight from anything that is uh, out there on the Mac in this space, this price price range. How does it work, um, how does it work data database wise? Um, how does it work if I'm not connected anymore to the database? Okay, so what you can do is uh, it's a client server application. 
um, and uh, the uh, database resides can reside on a server or can reside on your local machine. So what you can do is when you are want to go away from the office, uh, you can log into your the online database and say go offline. As long as the administrator has given you permission to do that, you can create an offline database and uh, work with that offline database um, wherever you are. And, and we can do up to 99 offline databases. So if you create a record on uh, your offline database and I create an off, uh, a record on my offline database, the same kind of thing, maybe a contact or a meeting or something, uh, when we come back and synchronize, there's not going to be any conflicts. Okay. It takes care of all of that stuff. It's very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. You have a smaller product which is called Billings, uh, which has been recently updated. Yes. Uh, what does Billings do? Well, with Billings, uh, Billings is a time billing, time tracking application, expense tracking application, targeted more towards uh, individual users as opposed to Daylight, which is multi-user. Um, so, you know, you can uh, track your time very efficiently. One of our key development um, uh, objectives was zero to uh, invoice in less than five minutes. So you download the application and you can um, uh, start it and within five minutes put out your very first invoice. But the beauty of it all is the quality of the output. So. Uh, you know, when you do, with other kinds of uh, applications like this that send out invoices, uh, you don't get the ability to really customize that invoice. You're either using RTF or HTML, and you know, it's not a professional looking invoice. Even with HTML, you, you can do a lot of work to it, but still not, you know, the totals are not in the right place, it's not absolute positioning, the page numbering doesn't work. And if you really want a good quality invoice, you have to use Quark or Illustrator or InDesign uh, to make a nice looking invoice, but that's not the right way to do uh, invoices. So in Billings, we have a WYSIWYG designer that allows you to set these things up. It's the same uh, designer that is in Daylight. It gives you the full power to access everything to create reports. But that designer allows you to do, you know, drag in an EPS so you keep the vector images, no rasterization, so you can have high quality, any font you want in the system. Uh, that OS 10 supports, you can have in there, so you can have a really good-looking invoice with the stuff at the bottom. And then, you know, that's really important for a lot of people because uh, your image is key, right? So you are now asking the customer for money, yeah, yeah. and uh, you're giving them, you know, like a like a garbage piece of paper yeah, yeah. with uh, with a bad-looking invoice. Uh, what, what, you know, you spend a lot of time on your uh, website yeah, and maybe yeah. your business cards or your brochures. But the invoice is where the money is actually exchanging, and that looks like garbage. So we're hoping to address that problem with uh, with Billings. You guys are based in Canada with offices in London, right? That's correct. That's correct. So we're in Canada, and um, and um, you know we have customers all over the world. So uh, for all all our French listeners, you are maybe planning also in the future some localizations. Absolutely, uh, we would really like to uh, to be able to get into uh, uh, multiple languages, and so we're working hard towards making the application ready, both applications ready, yeah. that we can actually do that. Yeah, Daylight is a big work of localizations, I guess. Yes, it's very, very big. It's a massive application. Oh, oh, oh are the days here since you are here at the Mac World? Well, it's been very interesting. The iPhone is uh, is, is really nice, and in fact, uh, I can do tell... Do something with your application. I was just going to say that, you know, we, uh, we uh, sent out our engineers to go look, see what we can do, and it looks like we'll be able to synchronize with it, yeah. uh, at least the contacts, the calendars. Uh, so uh, we should hopefully have that by the time um, uh, the uh, the iPhone is ready in Europe, yeah. Yeah. and so uh, we'll have that functionality. It looks really really nice. We had a look at it here earlier. Very nice. Pretty cool. Well, thank you. Anyways, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Martin Shimamoto. I work for Alpine Electronics as a product engineer there in the Torrance office. Okay. So Alpine, for those who don't know that, you basically do a lot of consumer electronics and then mostly auto radio or just auto radio. Uh, mo basically, uh, for the car, we do also navigation, uh, amplifiers, speakers, so anything for a mobile environment. And the reason why you are here at Macworld is because you integrate really well with the iPod. Right, that's what we're trying to promote now is our iPod interface. So we're in our third generation with this particular model here. So this one is actually something really, uh, really nice, is that it has directly the iPod interface almost integrated. Right, we tried to duplicate the iPod uh, HMI as closely as possible. Okay. So we're using the USB uh, uh, dock connector, that the same, basically the same connector you use for your computer. Okay. 
Okay. So is it is it like this this uh, car stereo is really marketed like for people having iPods, right? Right. So the radio itself is AM and FM, and then the iPod interface. So there's no CD mechanism, no cassette, nothing else. So the only digital source is going to be from the iPod. But who needs CDs anyways? <laughs> That's true. In my car, I don't listen to CDs hardly anymore either. Okay. Um, so uh, how, is it, um, how, how is the feedback here from the people coming here in the booth and looking at your products? Uh, so far we've been getting very positive reactions. Uh, the, um, we've gotten a best of show award from uh, iLounge.com okay. cool. and uh, yeah, everyone seems to like it. Okay. Um, have you seen the, the iPhone announcements? Uh, yes, I did. I didn't see it live, but I did download the stream afterwards. Okay. So yeah, I was very impressed with it. Can you me. guess my next question? <laughs> uh, I imagine it should work since it's using the same dock connector, but uh, we haven't tested it, so you know it's yeah. kind of up in the Processing. air, but we're assuming that it's going to work, because it, it interfaces with iTunes in much the same way as the current iPods. I'm Ben Castor, and I'm the director of product line management for the Seagate Branded Solutions Group. Okay, so which kind of products are you showing here? So the big news for today is actually we are showcasing our Maxter One Touch 3 Mini. And it's the first time that it has Mac. So it's available in 80, 120, and 160. So you can back up your entire Mac on, onto this little mini. So if you feel it, yeah. feel how heavy it is, it's relatively light. Okay, so and uh, the hard drive is already in it? It's hard drive is already in it. <laughs> Because I was about to think like, <laughs> like it's an empty one. <laughs> so it's a 2.5 inches, I guess? A half inch. And it's USB powered on the back. It's really cool. And the USB power is enough uh, to make it work uh, without uh, extra power? So what's nice is uh, typically one USB port will work, but we found some Mac MacBook Pro models that limit the power. So we have a Y cable designed specifically for the Mac that you plug in both into both USB ports and you'll get enough power. Okay. Okay. Um, which other products do you have in terms of bigger uh, hard drives? Because I know you guys are also well known to have those huge hard drives. So this is 80 gigs, 120, 160. We go all the way to 1.5 terabyte. Okay. So we have the One Touch 3 Turbo Edition, which you can see behind you. Okay. And right now, I'm streaming all these videos directly off of this Turbo Edition. Okay. So it's connected through FireWire 800, and I, I'm using it in a RAID 0 configuration. Okay. So it's two uh, hard drives? Two 750 gig drives okay. in there. Okay. okay, pretty nice. So I guess you guys are pretty interested by Mac OS 10 5 Leopard because of Time Machine, right? Absolutely. It's good to see all the different OS companies coming up, uh, putting an emphasis on backup. So certainly stresses our point of how important backup is to people. So people will need larger drives. So you guys, you guys have been pushing for backups like for the last 10 years or whatever, and now Apple is coming and they finally reached it and it's good for you. It's absolutely good. I mean, we, past two years we've been running a backup awareness campaign where we go around the world and we talk about ba it's important to back up. So it's good to see major companies like Apple push us into their OS. What kind of other product do you have here on Maxter? So we also have a product called Maxter Fusion, and it's a way for you to, it's, it's a network product, and you can share your media, so your photos, your videos, your songs, to other people, and you can post that online. Pretty cool. Have you seen the iPhone? I have seen the iPhone. What do you think about it? It's very cool. It's, I want one now. <laughs> like everybody. So how's the feedback here from the people coming at the booth? I think people are generally impressed. People are coming in and you saw how light this was. People love yeah. the Mini. Uh, people, especially the video editors, they love our Turbo. Because okay. they're dealing with video all the time. And Macs are more creative. And so we're allowing them to play with all their videos yeah. or music. You have a pretty big booth here. Yes, we do. I mean, you can see some of the ad campaigns that we're running. Yeah. So we're going to run national ad campaigns for both Maxter and Seagate, and this is the Maxter brand products. So, and you guys here are all wearing those uh, sports uh, sh uh, suits. It's really cool. It's the look. Okay. It's the look. Okay. So you didn't want to. You didn't want to wear wear a suit with a tie. No, no, no. I, I was actually perfect pushing. for the Mac world. I think. <laughs> I think. Because you know those 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 ad Mac and PC. Exactly. So we're not the ones with the tie. We're the Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So are you, how are you enjoying here the Mac World? I'm enjoying it. I remember from the keynote from yesterday, uh, the crowds have been great. We're actually giving away a mini every day, 12, 2 and 4. So if you can come back, we have a huge crowd and we give away two of these each drawing. So we are here at the Ecamm booth with Glenn. This is Glenn, not Ken, right? Hi there. I'm You're Glenn. the right one. Yeah, that's me. You're the photogenic side of the brothers, he told me. I'm the nice one. <laughs> So, um, and you are here to uh, talk about all your software, but also the hardware, because you're doing hardware since a few uh, months. 
Yeah, it's an exciting year for us. We've moved into hardware and computer accessories. We have the Image USB webcam, and we have the Huckleberry MacBook Mirror this year. Okay. So not only are we showing off all our software, but we have a whole bunch of other fun stuff too. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the, your software first. You are, guys are well known uh, since a lot of years for things like eyeglasses or other products. I, I, I personally use a lot uh, conference recorder and, and mostly call recorder because I trust more Skype than iChat. Yeah, our, our software is proven to be really popular. Um, we kind of built our business around creating software that is very, very inexpensive, it does what it says, and kind of fulfills a unique um, void in the Mac software market space. Okay. Uh, let's turn a little bit to the Huckleberry. I met you guys in the Mac, but, but stay here. I'm not finished with you. Um, I met you guys at the, the Mac Expo in London. That's you correct. guys are based in the UK, right? That's correct, yeah. We're based in the UK. We've come over here to help Ecamm uh, push our Huckleberry, which it, we invented this, well, in November last year. And uh, it's been incredibly successful. Uh, you know, what can you, what, what cheaper way can you uh, make your MacBook or your MacBook Pro into a video camera yeah. with a little, clever little yeah. mirror does the job. My company, uh, Mungai Mirrors, we make uh, mirrors from acrylic which are laser cut into wonderful shapes. Uh, a friend of mine, Charlie uh, Simpson, came along with this invention and said, what do you think? And we said, yeah, let's run with it and see what happens. And uh, it's actually been a fantastic success. Yeah, okay. So it's actually, you, uh, for you, it's a big advantage that Apple has uh, this camera which doesn't turn like the Sony ones, for example. Indeed. Uh, we, we hope that they don't turn it around, but uh, we don't think they will. No. So uh, I think we're here, here to stay. Okay. So how's the feedback, uh, how's the product working since you launched it actually a few months ago only? Okay, um, we, uh, we've just introduced at this show the uh, Mac Pro 2 version, which is an improved version on the first one. So we're constantly tweaking it to improve it and uh, the Mac Pro version works fantastically well okay. and uh, we've had incredibly good feedback for it. So I guess now you could work on the iPhone version because there's no camera on the front. Uh, we would definitely like to do that, yeah. We will, we'll, we'll look at that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's come back a little bit to uh, Ecamm. Um, you guys made a really nice CD here that you're distributing with all your software on it. Yeah, this is just something we can send people home with. It includes fully functional demos of all of our software. Mm -hmm. This includes eyeglasses, eye chat, USB cam. Conference recorder, call recorder, eye chatter, yeah. doc star, and card raider. Yeah. It also includes um, information about our the image USB web camera that we're selling. Okay, card raider is pretty new, right? That's our newest program. It's the uh, most affordable and best looking card recovery program for the Mac. Okay. If you lose photos from your digital camera or if the card is um, no longer mounts on your computer, card raider can usually scan the card, bring back all the pictures, and send them right to iPhoto. Mm -hmm. You guys have watched the keynote being a little bit anxious, right, about the iSight? Well, we were interested to see what Apple would announce. As most people know, the iSight camera was discontinued a couple months ago, first in Europe and then in the United States. Um, now it's only really available on eBay. Um, so we were kind of wondering whether Apple would release um, a new camera solution. They chose to release the iPhone and the Apple TV. Uh, you know, as Mac developers, you know, we would have liked one of the announcements to at least be related to the Mac. But you know, you can't always win. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you guys interesting into the iPhone in, true, in terms of uh, of the possibility to develop for it, which is right now they say it's it's closed platform, but it could be that you could do also some pretty uh, some nice hexes. You know what I mean? I think there's definitely potential for that. Um, we saw that the iPod itself was originally closed platform, and now they're clearly opening that up to game developers now that we're yeah. seeing the games for the iPod. Yeah. So I think it's really just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. Right. You've seen also the iPhone, right? The keynote. Yeah, I have. Uh, it looks very, uh, very interesting. I'm a little bit concerned about the price of it. I, uh, yeah, and the networks in Europe. And the network in Europe. Well, I'm not sure whether I'll buy What's one. What's going to be? We'll see. Uh, don't know. Yeah, I don't we know. don't know actually. No. Could be, we could be it, Vodafone it's because going they're to be more expensive than here, and that's for sure. <laughs> we know it. Yeah. 
the computer on their file from anywhere across the internet. The other side was so that is one of the new features that we have inside of iChat. <laughs> Next round of features I'm going to show you have to do with video We have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, what's going to is how you go see those. Bring her to silence. Fire up a video chat here. Go ahead and call yeah, like, Joe. Like, real quickly, when it's silence, you yeah, can so like you. It's at the very top. And a SIM slot, and uh, uh, a jack for your earphones, and then uh, a so sleep wake button. Here so that's yeah. basically how you put it to sleep. My name is Carrie Sharbo, and I'm the Vice President of Corporate Communications for Casemate. Okay, so I would guess Casemate does cases. Cases for just about everything, nano, iPod. Earlier this year, we decided to branch out into uh, Mac accessories. We also do BlackBerry Trio, PDA, and cell phone, basically. So what are the biggest, well, the products you, you show here that are the most important for you? The most important right now, this year, is our suit. Uh, it's the product that we're, we're launching here at the show. Um, it, I feel like it's a really innovative product because it's not only cool and showcases that users have a Mac product, but it also protects um, and, and keeps the, the product safe. And it shows the Apple. Most importantly, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, is it like you have heard of some customers that they wanted something like that? Because to be honest, I've never seen I've never seen something like that. It's pretty unique. You know, after the show last year, it just kind of seemed like a natural extension of our iPod cases. Um, so I, I went home and I, I thought that this might be a, a possibility. Um, and and it took you know the better part of 10 months to perfect the design and perfect the product and get the packaging. And and now that we've launched it, people really seem to like it. So it's maybe important to open it to show that uh, you have something pretty uh, smart, which is this thing here. So maybe you can turn it, um, which uh, goes from one side to the other. And actually, you don't need to take it out to use your MacBook, which is cool. Right, they're clear plastic bands that are on the top of the uh, front and on the bottom. Um, you stretch them out really well. You slide your notebook in. Your notebook essentially snaps into place. And then the suit has precise cutouts that you can access all features and controls of your uh, notebook. So that, that's pretty cool actually because I've seen already some cases where you need to take it out and um, this, this band is here perfectly fit so it won't bother the webcam for example. Yeah, the camera is fully accessible, the DVD is fully accessible, the power supply, everything that you need so you never need to take it off. There's maybe another product uh, that we maybe can bring, which is the handles, because when I walked here around, I uh, saw this thing. It's pretty amazing. I have a MacBook myself. Oh, I'm glad you like the product. Um, what this is, is it is a handle it. We have it for the MacBook and the MacBook Pro, and as you see in the MacBook, it comes in white or black. Um, it's aircraft aluminum, so it's a very resilient material. Um, it, it's a handy handle, but when it's in use, it doubles as a passive heat sink. Yeah. So it just slips under, and this product right here actually helps draw out the heat from the notebook. And it also has this nice leather feature as well, so it's a comfort grip. And it's pretty easy to install, it's just the original screws? Yeah, it takes about 20 seconds. On the MacBook, um, they're the original holes, we provide the screws. The screws need to be about three millimeters longer, so we provide the screws for that. Um, and you have a product that goes with it, we could say? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the sleeve is for any of the notebooks. It's form-fit leather, and it works just like this. You just slide your... Uh, let me try this again. You slide your notebook right in, and then it's an easy slide out. And it fits perfectly. Yeah, all of our products are, are custom designed. That's why they're not interchangeable with the iBook or the G4. Unfortunately, we're making uh, products for the newer notebooks. How is it going here? Uh, uh, which feedback do you have from the people here? The feedback has been really great. I think the public just in general loves leather, they love high quality, they love innovative, unique, and that's what we are. And, and we also try to pass on products that are necessary and that don't gouge. I mean, I think all of our products are very reasonable. You do iPod cases, what about the iPhone? Uh, actually, we, you know, our wheels started churning as soon as we started seeing that. So you'll be seeing something from Casemate very soon. Hey, we're here with um, Karim, which is the developer of DJ, right? Yeah. So How are you, you doing? Just, 
you do, I'm doing fine, and you are also really doing yeah. fine because you just earned something. Right. By doing some exercise. I had to do 25 push-ups, <laughs> and then Make Life gave me a new DJ mixer. Okay, cool. Okay. How is it going with with DJ with the development? How are you guys working on the thing? Yeah, maybe there'll soon be something out. Yeah. So gotta check it out, guys. Soon something. <laughs> yeah. www.algorithm.net. It's A L G. O R I W D I M dot net. Okay. And um, yeah, what have you seen here on the show, on the show floor? Great Apple stuff. Okay. New phone. Yeah. Great things. So you're nice. probably gonna try to stay in the U.S. as long as possible to get the iPhone, because yeah. when you come back in, in in Germany, it means you will have to wait more. Right. <laughs> no, I'll definitely try. Bad, to bad, bad. <laughs> until I get the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Definitely gotta get it. Okay. So you're here only today. Oh yes, probably tomorrow. What have you seen except Apple? Uh, I went to Griffin. They have some good new stuff. Okay. Uh, checked out some uh, new audio software. Berkeley Music Stand over there doing some good music performance. Yeah. Great How stuff going on. How's the piano lessons going? Very good. Yeah. Just starting piano lessons again. Yeah. Did so maybe soon there'll be a uh, piano software. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Did you watch the keynote? Oh, yeah, I watched it. Did you enjoy the, the musical part of it? It was great, yeah. yeah. It was a great keynote, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, Did you I, like it? Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. I pretty much, I pretty much guess, guess this guy is starting to be an Apple employee, this guy, this Meyer, whatever, <laughs> because he's there every time. But um, he, he, does, he does some pretty cool music, yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah I really liked it. Okay. So how is it going here in, this, in the US for you? Uh, or are you enjoying life here in the US? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah? What are the advantages there or the inconvenience in, uh, against Germany, for example? Oh. US versus Germany. I think the US is more relaxed than Germany. People are more relaxed, more open. Yeah. But like Germany is cool too. Yeah. I look forward to going back to Germany. Okay. Great country. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy the show for again and try to do some push-ups again. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ken Case from the Omni Group. Okay, so we've been trying to catch up for a few months. It's quite a while. <laughs> So you've been really busy. It, it's been a very busy year. It's been a great year. Yeah. First of all, let's start with um, Omni Group. It, it has a very long past in the Mac history, no? Yeah, well, it's sort of partially Mac history and partially pre-Mac or uh, next history, next really, history. right? Yeah. Um, so you're pretty much one of the um, oldest company doing things with Cocoa. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I think ourselves and Andrew Stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, and a lot of, of uh, developers are even using your frameworks. Yeah, we published our frameworks years ago, and we continue to update them every so often. Okay. Which I guess I I would guess your frameworks are also the base of all your applications. Yeah, we, those are the frameworks that we use in all of our apps. Yeah. Um, what's the application you have to show us and to, to uh, tell about to us? Well, the application we just shipped uh, last month was called OmniPlan, yeah. OmniPlan 1.0, which is a project management application. And so uh, it's uh, it's. We've, it's something we've actually been working on for years, but we had to kind of set on the back burner while we worked on Omni Grapple and Omni Outliner, and you know we wanted to focus our energy on getting those products mature to where our customers could really take advantage of them, use them. And uh, what is the purpose of uh, Omni Project? Obviously, it is to manage project, but it, it's really, I guess, about scheduling projects. So you build a timeline of all of your tasks. You, you uh, look at how the tasks interrelate with each other. You assign people to the tasks and so on. And make sure that people aren't overloaded, and uh, and that's kind of what it's about. Yeah. How many people at Omni? About 28, I think. <laughs> how, how hard is it to um, manage all those different projects? Because it looks like um, over the last few years you had like I don't know five or six applications, but over the last six months you had once again one uh, five or six applications. Yeah, it was. It's been a busy time. <laughs> That's why we've had such trouble catching up. Yeah. yeah. So how, how hard it is to uh, catch up with the different projects? Oh, it's not too hard. We, uh, the way we kind of structure our teams is uh, we have meetings for, between uh, all of the people who are involved with the project every two weeks. And so those are our sort of uh, cross-department uh, meetings where everybody gets a chance to kind of get together and look at what people have been doing and, and so on. And then within a team, people are you know, meeting daily and working together daily, of course. And we're still a pretty small company, so everybody knows everybody. So not, not too many meetings? No, not too many meetings. The, the daily meetings are like five-minute meetings. So uh, the, uh, the meetings every two weeks are, you know, it, it depends on what we need to meet about, but 15 minutes to possibly an hour. 
I was telling your colleague from the user experience lead, who, who what's his name? So the, the, your colleague, which is here, which is the user oh, experience. Oh, uh, William Van Heck, Bill. I was telling him that the, the application I use the most at Omni is, funny enough, Omni uh, Disk Sweeper. <laughs> And you know why? Because I'm a podcaster, so which means my hard drives are always full. Filling it up over and yeah. over again. Yeah. From time to time, I have to know where is it full. Right. And yeah, him and I is doing a Omni. Is doing a good job. Oh, good. Well, you know, it's funny. The reason I wrote Omni Disk Sweeper in the first place was to make space on my hard drive because I was installing Quake 2. <laughs> so that also dates, I guess, when we when we started writing that. It was uh, during the OpenStep era when when it also ran on Windows, and so I was making space on my Windows hard drive, and, uh, <laughs> and so I wrote this thing. So you, you was one of the one of the few, by the way, at that time to work with next computers, like like I would say one of the ten people. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we want to joke about that. Well, you know, there were quite a few people who were developing on Next Computers, but they weren't, there, there weren't so many people that were developing software for the mass market, because yeah. there wasn't a mass market, right? And so, um, and so, you know, there were a few big names like Lighthouse Design, and, uh, and we were working with them and, and on collaborating on some of their projects. Uh, but uh, most of the people who were working on the Next at that time were doing consulting in some form or another and doing, or doing very vertical application, you know, helping a, either in financial sector or in the telecommunications sector. So you're based, you guys are based in Seattle, right? Yeah, we're in Seattle. Okay. How hard it is to be in Seattle for, I guess you have this, you have heard this question like 20,000 times, for a Mac guy in Seattle, which is like the Microsoft city. You know, it's not, but not really hard. <laughs> no, there, it's surprising how many Mac people there are in yeah. Seattle right now. I mean, there are a lot of a lot of other developers there. Well, just right. like Jim Alchin, for example. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not a Mac developer, but at least a Mac fan. Yeah. 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 But um, okay, so what the other project, the pro uh, product you are uh, showing to the people here, except the uh, Omni project? Well, the other thing that a lot of people are asking us about this week is OmniFocus, which is our upcoming application. You know, we're not actually showing it here yet, it's not ready to demo, but um, OmniFocus is our application for managing to-do lists. It's kind of a to-do list on steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about OmniDazzle? That's a pretty funny application. It, it is a fun little application. I, uh, yeah, you can show this one, because this one is really something you want to see. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to just, just describe. It's, um, yeah, you have to see it. On your screen, you know, there are lots of different crazy effects that, that you can do with this thing, where you can scribble on the screen, or you can uh, do some just, uh, crazy cursor effects, and, and the interface itself was kind of fun to come up with and, at all in the first place. And why am I, oh, I'm done, I need to shake the mouse to clear the screen, there we go. All right, I usually have my uh, settings a little bit different. Oh, the zoom one is a new one. No, the zoom has been here for a while. You go in here and you say, uh, like, zoom in on this rectangle, and. Voila. <laughs> oh, that one didn't come, came into my mind the, the last time I used it. Yeah, it's a pretty funny application. So, uh, um, how is it doing, by the way, this Omnidazzle? Because it's kind of a, the, of um, your little baby. Oh, it's it's. It depends on how you measure success. I think it's been a really great success in terms of, um, you know, showing what we can do and you know, in experimenting with some new UIs and and so on. It's not. I wouldn't call it a wild commercial success. There's not, there's not a lot of commercial demand for something like this, yeah. right? But, but it was fun to write. Yeah. Okay. How was the feedback here from the people uh, coming? Oh, the feedback has been great. We had a lot of people come by and just, you know, tell us how. Sometimes they just want to come by and say, "Hey, you know, I appreciate your apps. You guys do great work," and that's always very rewarding. Um, and we've also, and sometimes they, you know, want to know what the latest things we're doing, so we get a chance to talk to them about that as well. Not to forget, you have a pretty cool browser also at Omni. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Yeah, no, we uh, Omni Web of course dates back to uh, 1994, so um, so it, it predates Netscape's release and our Internet Explorer. <laughs> and, uh, it's been running on Next Step at that time, I guess. Yeah, running on the Next Step. Okay, at that time, like you said previously, it was possible to make the things running on Windows, right? Yeah, well, not at that time, but a few years later, yes, around more like the 96 time frame. Okay, so 96, so just one year before that day that Apple bought them. Yeah, and you know, we weren't all that excited about that because no. <laughs> Windows development was not something we wanted to get into. So we were, you know, we were experimenting with that, of course, and we, were take, we ported some of our applications to Windows, but that was also a time where we started working with Sun and uh, collaborating on, uh, on what became the JDK and you know, some of the tech system yeah. and so yeah. on. And then uh, December of '96 rolled around, and um, and we heard the good news that Apple was uh, buying Next, and we're like, yes, the, how soon can we get out of these Java contracts and get back to using Objective C? And 
programming. Okay. So um, I guess technically it's not hard for them to make like once again Coca work on Windows, right? Well, or it has changed so much. No, it's not that. Well, I, there have been a lot of changes. That, you know, things like core graphics would be pretty hard to do, I think, and core animations. Yeah. Some of the newer effects that are built onto there. But um, I guess the other thing I would say is that even back then, even though it worked, the, you know, our software worked on Windows. It wasn't something you'd want to sell, okay. like because you would um, you'd have maybe De Omni Disk Sweeper, right? Is a really great example. You have this little application, Omni Disk Sweeper or Omni Web, and uh, it's maybe two or three megabytes as a download. But in order to install that and use it on Windows, you had to install the OpenStep runtimes, which also included Display Postscript, so you had to have this extra server running, and it was like another 150 megabyte install. That you Sounds like .NET. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it, it, that was one of the reasons that we weren't so interested in the Windows direction. Yeah, you was at the keynote, right, yesterday? Yes. Yeah. What about the iPhone? Oh, the iPhone is cool. I, I'm looking forward to replacing my phone, <laughs> uh, if the, uh, at least if the keyboard typing works out. Yeah. So, um, uh, from a developer uh, point of view, what about um, developing for the iPhone, which is for the moment closed, just like this, it's a closed platform, but I guess you guys are dreaming about it, right? Oh, yeah, you wouldn't wouldn't believe how many ideas our uh, OmniGraphle product manager, Joel, has already had about, uh, you know, how the UI could work as, you, you know, you turn things and you shift things yeah. and um, flip around between, you know, different Grapple interfaces that he's already even got a sort of code name for, you know, Omni Napkin, <laughs> so you yeah. draw your stuff on there and keep it simple and then take it back to your desktop and flush it out. Since you know a few things technically, I want to take advantage of you and ask you some question. Um, you think it's really Mac OS 10 running over there or, or like a subset of Mac OS 10 obviously or it's just like a, a, a marketing Mac OS 10? Well, it's not going to be all of the services of Mac OS 10, right? So you're not going to have some of uh, like printing, for example. There's no reason to have printing in the phone. but. Um, but there's certainly enough of Mac OS 10 to have you know, the Safari stuff running, yeah. the Safari engine running. Right. So you've got um, you know, all of the display layers. Uh, you've got core anim You've got some of the animation effects in there. You've got QuickTime in there to play the movies and to play the sound. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of pieces I think that yeah. really are truly Mac OS 10. But it's different in the sense that it's not the full range of services that you need on desktop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Omni Web also WebKit biz? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so we pretty much guess the iPhone uses do this WebKit technology for Safari, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the reason why we think it's really a subset of Mac OS X. But now the thing is, will they open that to the uh, to uh, to the developers or not? Well, I, I can't answer that quite obviously. I guess, that's a I guess we'll have the answer in six months at the WWDC. Yeah, I assume that would be there will be a lot of people asking them about that. That, that would be funny because that would be a new thing after Leopard. Yeah, I don't ever imagine, for example, writing OmniWeb for the iPhone because it's already got Safari in there. And a lot of what makes OmniWeb OmniWeb involves, you know, more like the graphical tabs and so on, where you, where you really want more real estate. You're not going to want something like that on, on the iPhone, I think. Uh, but I could really see something like OmniFocus on the iPhone, right? Where you want your to-do list and you want to be able to take it with you and see. Uh,